What would you do if the government took your citizenship away? Said your birth certificate doesn't matter? That despite being born and raised in Canada, your citizenship has never been real? This is Deepan. He was born in Ottawa. His parents are Canadian. They immigrated from India. But the government says Deepan must go back where his parents came from because he got on the wrong side of the law. Welcome to Canada, fighting deportation. I had a troubled childhood. Wanted to get away, so I ran. Then got in trouble, because living on the street, sleeping in the van, sleeping in the cars. Then you get to do a crime, then get in trouble with the law. I'm on the right side, my brother's on the left side. I'm just posing for a picture. My brother's smiling, but I'm not smiling. I would actually say, yeah, we did have different childhoods. He stayed with the family, I didn't. He was brought up the whole time, I wasn't. I'm not close to, like, to my dad as I'm close to my mom. He expected me to be something in life. I don't care if I let him down. Nor do I give a damn if he feels, how he feels about me whatsoever. I don't want to think about the past. I don't want to remember the past. I just want to keep on moving forward in life and turn to better my life instead of thinking and harping and what is he, what is going to do for me? Absolutely nothing. But the past is not easy to escape. His parole has forced him back into his parents' house. Deepan ran away from home to live on the streets when he was 12. He soon found himself mixed in with the wrong crowd. It's a decision that still haunts him today. It's a decision that eventually landed him behind bars. At 19, Deepan was sentenced to three and a half years in prison for a drug and weapon conviction. And that's when his deportation problems began. Deepan is one of the more focused clients I've ever had. Um, he is in constant communication with me. There's a very obscure part of the Citizenship Act and basically said so if you're born of people who are working for diplomats, you're not considered a, a citizen uh, through birth and you have to get your citizenship by other means. For four years, Deepan's parents worked for an Indian diplomat in Canada, cooking and cleaning at the commissioner's home. But months before Deepan was born, his parents stopped working for the Indian diplomat. Because of this, Deepan is not recognized as a citizen by the government of India. Despite this, the Canadian government claims Deepan is not a citizen here either. So what the Canadian government has done, they've effectively um, made Deepan stateless. Deepan has a group of supporters, unions, NGOs, and a committee of local activists. They help publicize the case, raise funds for the cause, and organize lobbying campaigns on his behalf. Committee members like Stan fill the void of friendship missing in Deepan's life. The real injustice, he lived here, you know, his entire life. He's born here, his parents are Canadian citizens, his brother's a Canadian citizen, yet he's being told you have no right to be here. I mean, it's entirely arbitrary, you know. If you think back to that first uh, meeting we had, to where things are at now. Got to do more. <laughs> Classic response. Well, I know, what did you envision, like, uh, say, six months down the road when we had that first meeting? Um, more. A little bit more, though. In what, in what aspect? Yeah, I mean, developments that have happened. Um, I would have uh, wanted more unions to sign on as an endorsement and more fundraising through the committee as well as um, more awareness. So anything else that doesn't involve the adjective more? 
<laughs> exactly. There you go. Exactly what it is. You can't have emotion when you find a state. Yeah, but we all do anyway, right? But you can't. You can't release yeah, it. You gotta yeah. contain your emotion dramatically because yeah. the state's so cruel and so yeah. and so like. They're vicious people. My life is my campaign. So, got no social life, just strictly meetings, um, exercise, and campaigning. That's all I have. It's a condition of Deepan's parole to see a counselor. Not trusting the government, he pays for his own as well. They both say he's suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder. He doesn't sleep for days at a time. He doesn't eat properly. He doesn't stop. It can come from group homes, it can come from jail time, it can be coming from an immigration aspect. When I run, it helps with the frustration and anger. I'll go and just run faster and run faster, and it'll help with the anger and frustration because you're, you're, you're letting it out. In prison, you have a time cap. So you know when your day's coming, you'll be free. Pay your debt to society, move on with your life. With immigration, there's no time cap. This can go on for years and years and years. After his release from prison, Deepan was ordered to live with his parents. His younger brother, David, is the only one he cares about. Okay, so remember the last box I got you? You didn't get me anything. Yes, I did. I got a little what? tiny piece of chicken, and another piece of chicken, and some, and some scalloped potatoes. And I also offered another time when we were at PTO from work. Yeah, but that wasn't for me. That was your leftover shit. No, it wasn't. Yes, it was. <laughs> what was it? I said, if you want it, I didn't even eat any of it. How were you feeling when uh, I got deported? I was facing deportation. Once I found out that, that it was going to happen, like, it bothered me a lot. Because, like, the only person I really had in this, have in this world is you, because we, we have shitty parents. So, like, it is what it is on that case. So, it was pretty uh, stressful and and depressing, really, and saddening. Just, like, thinking that I'm going to be solo dolo in this world. After a surprise visit from armed officers, Deepan put up 11 security cameras. I would say a lot of people think that I'm paranoid. I don't trust a lot of people. Everything's on camera from outside all around the house. There used to be one blind spot in the driveway. I, f I corrected that. I had another camera. Gives me a sense of uh, secureness, I guess. Feels like, yeah, I have some protection here to a certain degree. But uh, if they try to pull anything shady, I'm protected because it's saved to an online server as well as saved here and sent to my lawyer's office on a daily basis. It's uncertain if Deepan's nightmare will end. But he thinks about that day. When they, when they declare him citizen, how would it feel like? That day? Okay, I won. I'm still neutral. No emotion. How, how can I have emotion that I won? The government took away my citizenship made me become stateless, no healthcare, no nothing. I'm finding every single aspect, sitting in this kind of limbo for years on years, dealing with all these kind of conditions, with no a violation of complete charter of rights, a violation of international law. How, why would I be happy? I'm getting back what I, honestly, my birthright. So what, what's, what's so happy to be about? I'm getting back something that I already had, that they took away? What's there to happy about? There's nothing to be happy about.